breakfast. Okay, so just uh, be patient. We will be starting with an introduction about our progressive course and about the biostatistics workshop. And then uh, my webinar, the actual webinar, after the introduction of the course, will take only about 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, maybe 30 minutes. So let me give the microphone to our uh, senior staff, Asma. If you're ready, you can start. Yes, Dr. Napia, for course students, the biostatistics workshop is free for you. For all our course students, the regular course, and those who will enroll in the progressive course, the whole biostatistics workshop is free, is included, okay? Uh, this portion, this topic, how to choose the correct study design is just one topic in the, in the workshop, okay? You're welcome. Hello everyone, good evening and a warm welcome from the entire team of MedExam Expert. This side, Asma, course coordinator for MSUG1 courses. So today we are here for an amazing webinar from our talented mentor, Dr. Jezri. But first, let me give you a brief introduction about our mentor's team. So we have Dr. Muhammad Halmi as our chief mentor. Also, we have Dr. Jezri, Dr. Ramya, Dr. Mevesh, and Dr. Maria. So now let me tell you about our progressive course. So in our progressive course, we will conduct live sessions in which we are going to revise all the important modules that are necessary for the exams of MRCOG1. After the revision of the subject, we are going to give you a topic test of that subject so the students can assess their preparation. Along with this, we are going to give PDFs and recording of the session so that you can revise your concepts. You will be added in a Facebook study group where the mentor will solve all your queries and you will have daily discussions. We will also provide flashcards for quick revision and mock exams will be provided to have an experience of real exam before the actual exam. In the end, we are going to add you in a workshop group where our mentor, Dr. Mavish, will conduct 1,000 plus questions for the recalls, where you are going to discuss all the exam-related questions. So in our progressive course, we will proceed like this. First of all, we will give you pre-course activities that will include the recorded sessions, okay? And after that, we will conduct live sessions. And in the live sessions, we are going to revise all the important topics. After that, you will be added in the workshop phase where you are going to discuss 1,000 plus questions in the study group. And with this preparation, you're going to clear your exams. Now let's uh, look at the schedule for the pre progressive course. So first of all, we are going to conduct the live sessions. And then for that particular topic, we are going to give you the topic test on our application that you are going to attempt and you are going to assess your preparation according to that. So here are basically the reviews of our beloved students. So that's all from my side, Dr. Desri. I hope everything is clear. If you have any question regarding the course, you can write in the chat box or team will be available for any kind of query. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Asma. Okay, Asma forgot to mention to you guys that um, if you join our progressive course, you are included uh, to join the biostatistics workshop for free, okay? 
And I think the revision course, the five-day revision course of 1,000 plus question is also free for those who will uh, uh, enroll in the progressive course. Usually the biostatistics workshop and the revision course, five-day revision course, they are charged, they are open for all, okay? Uh, there's a payment for that, okay? But for the regular course and the progressive course, uh, it comes as free, okay? So let me share my screen. If you have an, any other question, kindly reserve it at the end of the webinar and Asma will be willing to ask, answer all of those, okay? So let's start with our workshop. Okay, again, thank you very much for attending this webinar. I know it's a Friday. Uh, it's your off day in the hospitals and I know everyone or most of you are fasting. So thank you very much for joining me before iftar. I, we are very, very um, grateful that you can spare some of your time uh, for MedExam expert, okay? So uh, this topic, is uh, about biostatistics. You, uh, I am your mentor for today. I am your instructor for today. You can call me Dr. Desiri. You can call me Dr. Desiree, or you can call me Dr. Desiri. Okay, because uh, the pronunciation is different from everyone. Okay. Some some can can uh, pronounce my name by syllabication like Desiri. Some can pronounce my name as Desiree which is the right pronunciation. It is a from, of, of a French origin, okay? And some desire from the word desire. So any, any way you call my name, it's okay with me, it's fine with me, okay? So at any point in time, if I go fast or you cannot understand my accent, just kindly um, tell me, okay? Call my attention and I will repeat what I have said, okay? So we will be dealing now with study designs. Let me just go into the slide presentation. Is my clear, is my um, screen visible to everyone? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, when we talk about study design, what comes into your mind? What are the study designs that you know? Anyone can answer? Cohort cross sectional. Very Randomized good. Randomized control cross sectional. Very, very good. So, all that you mentioned. Yes, very good. So, all of those cohort cross sectional case control, prospective, retrospective, randomized control, these are all your study design. So, I would like to give you the overview of your study design tree. Okay, so this is how you go about in answering the questions for MRCOG 1 and 2. As you all know, MRCOG 1 and 2 have the same coverage or same syllabus for statistics. Okay, so first of all, uh, you have to ask your, yourself, did the investigator assign exposure? Okay, that means, uh, did the researcher uh, put several groups into the study? So if he does, then that means you are doing or you are dealing with experimental study, okay? Wait, let me just put on my laser pointer. Okay, so if it was assigned, then you are, the researcher is doing an experimental study. If exposures are not assigned, then that is observational, okay? So if it was randomized, that means um, there's no bias in the selection, there's, there was no selection. The subjects are taken for ran, at random, so that is an RCT, okay? If there was no randomization, so basically it's a non-randomized control trial. Observational study is further subdivided into analytical and descriptive, okay? When you say descriptive, from the word descriptive, that means describing, okay? There's no analysis involved. So that means these are your frequency table. You look at a graph, okay? Or you look at a histogram, and then you just describe what you see. So if, 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 if it deals with reporting, then that is just case report, case series, case study. For example, you want to know the effect of a new drug in a particular disease, okay? And during the course of the study, 
there was something or some some patient one patient mutated or what that patient has a, a different reaction from from the expected outcome so that different reaction or different result is reported as a case report case report and case study are always being used interchangeably okay so when you got this case report and then you see that more people or more subjects are having a different outcome, the same as the first one, then you can call it a case series. If it is only one, it is a case report. If there are several changes in the outcome, then that is a case series, okay? So if you can see here, look here, cross-sectional can either be an observational, observational descriptive, it can also be an analytical study, okay? So what is the difference? Uh, later on, I will tell you the difference between the two, but very briefly, when you say it is a descriptive study, there is no analysis that is involved. These are purely your survey. So survey is a cross-sectional descriptive study, okay? This is survey. So the confusion comes in most of the time within the cohort, cross-sectional, and the case control study in the analytical portion of the design tree. So we will be dealing with this tree in details, okay? So experimental studies, as we have mentioned, investigator assigned exposure, okay? If there is a comparison group, then you can categorize it as randomized and non-randomized without a control group. For observational study, the study focus on exposure that are, are already present in the population and it assess the effects of the exposure on that cohort. When you say cohort, don't confuse with the cohort study. When you say cohort, it's also called as group. For example, you say cohort Dr. of cases. Doctor, your full screen is not visible. My screen is not visible? Full screen is not visible. Somebody else, can you see my screen? Yeah, it's clear. Yes, ma'am. It's visible. Okay, so maybe you can just log out, doctor, and then log in again. Because it's visible to everyone else. Okay, when we say cross section, uh, when we say observational study, so the study focus on exposure that are already present in the population, okay? You'll just, you are just observing. You are not doing experiment, okay? That means the result and the outcome is already there. You just have to describe or analyze, okay? So it is further categorized into analytical and descriptive. Analytical studies, this include your cohort, your case control, and your cross-sectional. And your descriptive studies, these are your case report, case series, and your case study, okay? So let's go to the most uh, confusing portion, the observational analytical study, okay? You have your cohort, you have your case control, and you have your cross-sectional. So cohort is all... Uh, it's usually a prospective study, but you can also do a retrospective cohort. However, your uh, case control is always a retrospective study. And when you say cross-sectional, it is looking at a population at a single point in time. Okay, so let's go in details about describing cohort study. When you say cohort study, I, as I have told you, cohort means group. So it is a study actually, literally, it's a study of a group, okay? So it is a longitudinal study. When you say longitudinal study, you have here. Okay, this is the present. This is the future. So you follow up the, the people who will develop the outcome. Or you go back in time to determine the exposure. So it's a longitudinal study, okay? longitudinal, it's going one side or the other. It provides very powerful result if well-designed. It can either be prospective or retrospective 
it is more suitable for rare exposure. Why is it suitable for rare exposure? Because in cohort study, what you gather are the people with exposure and those people without exposure. Okay, so you can, you can determine the incidence of the disease and the most common drawback is attrition bias. So when you say attrition bias, this is the fallout, okay? Because you are doing cohort in a longer time, you are following the, them up through time. So some, these are the people with risk factors. So some people fall out in the study. They cannot come back for follow up. So this is what you call attrition bias, okay? So before we give you an example about cohort, okay, about retrospective and prospective cohort, we should know first, what is the difference between prospective and retrospective? So that's very easy. When you say prospective, that, that means what? Going to the future, okay, prospect, from the word prospect, okay? For example, I have a prospective house. That means you are thinking of the future. I have a prospective job, okay? So you're looking forward to the future. Retrospective, that means retrospect. That means going back, okay? So let us look at this drawing, okay? So this is the researcher. This is the start of your study, okay? At the start of your study, for cohort, what you gather are the risk factor, always remember that. So you gather the risk factor, you follow them up through time. This is future, is your prospective cohort, okay? For the retrospective part, you gather the exposure, the risk factor. First, you go back in time, you get the risk factor, and then you follow them up until the present. Okay, so that's the difference between retrospective and prospective. Exposure so now, meaning? what that mean in prospective? I'm 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 going into that. Okay, so this is prospective cohort study. Okay, so when you say prospective cohort, you are looking forward in time. So, for example, here, look here. Okay, look here, everyone. This is the start of the study. So for cohort, I always tell you what you gather are the exposures. That means the risk factor, risk factor for a certain disease. So these are the risk factors. For example, you wanted to study the cohort of 117 nurses with or without cancer or cardiovascular disease. So your cohort here is the group of nurses, okay? These are your subjects, the nurses. So at the start of your study, you gather those with the risk factor, those who are obese. Of course, you know that obese have risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And the lean or the healthy individuals don't have the risk factor. So you gather the obese and the lean nurses, and then you follow them up, for example, until 2024, who will develop the disease. So this is a prospective cohort. Okay, is this clear or you want me to repeat? Clear. Clear, okay. So just remember in cohort, what you gather at the time of the study are the risk factors, okay? So now if prospective cohort is clear, let's go to retrospective cohort, okay? At the start of the study here, the start of the study, today is 2023, cohort, what are you going to gather? Risk factors, right? So you wanted to know in a man manufacturing company who will develop cancer, okay? Or death, incidence of death. So what are your risk factor, the tire makers and the clerical staff? Okay, so at the start of the study, you gather the risk factors, you go back in time first. Okay, so this is 2023, this is 2022. You go back in time, you gather the tire makers and the clerical staff. Why? Why the tire makers and the clerical staff? Because the tire makers are the ones that are exposed to fumes and smoke. So they are the more at risk of death, okay? because they are the one dealing with the machine. They are the ones that will be exposed 
Ano, okay? For lung cancer and eventually death. Okay? And the clerical staff who are always sitting inside the office are not exposed to risk or hazards. So they compare those with the, the risk factor and those who doesn't have the risk factor. And then they gather it at 2022 in the past. And then they go forward until the, tar the start of the study, which is 2023, and determine who will develop the disease or who will die. So this is retrospective cohort, okay? You go back in time, but what you gather are the risk factors, not the disease, okay? Because in case control, I will tell you the difference, okay? So now we go to case control studies. Case control studies are quick and expensive. It requires fewer subjects. It is always retrospective and suitable for rare diseases. Why? It is suitable for rare diseases because in case control from the word case and control, cases, these are the disease. And you have control. So what you gather are the diseases and then you compare it into the normal population. That's why it's case control studies, okay? So look here. So this is your cohort. This is your case control, okay? This is the start of the study, okay? At the start of the study, in a cohort type of study, what you gather are the risk factors, the exposure and the non-exposure. You follow them up through time and compare who will develop the disease and who will not develop the disease, okay? In a case control study, at present time, what you gather are the disease, these are your cases, and the non-disease, this is your control, and then you go back in time, this is the present, okay? 2023. You go back in time in 2022, and you will determine who has the risk factor, okay? So that's the difference between a case control and a retrospective cohort. In retrospective cohort, if you will look back, at the start of the study, you go back in time first, you gather the risk factor, and then you go back to the present to know who has the disease. And like in your case control, you gather the disease and the non-disease, you go back in time and then determine the risk factor, okay? So let's leave it at that. We will summarize it later on at the end. So for cross-sectional study, you know that cross-sectional study is determining the risk and exposure, risk or exposure and the outcome at one single point in time. So I would like to differentiate from you because I've mentioned in the study design tree that cross-sectional study can be descriptive or it can be analytic. Okay, so for example, you wanted to know the prevalence of depression among healthcare workers, and you wanted to conduct a descriptive cross-sectional study. When you say descriptive, you don't analyze, you just describe. So what you did, you interviewed a group of medical health workers and asked them to fill out a survey form. You get the variables, age, marital status, and working hours, and you ask how many has depression, okay? So you ask them outright question, do you experience symptoms of depression? Do you experience uh, being sad most of the time, not happy with your work? So this is just survey, okay? This is descriptive. Unlike in analytic, okay, once you, you already got the result of your survey and you wanted to go further, and make your cross-sectional study an analytical one. So what you will do is those who have answered that they have depression, you will group them into two, okay? And then you will divide them into local healthcare workers and expatriate healthcare workers. Why? Because you know that the local healthcare workers, these are living in a place with their family and the expatriates, they are away from their family. So the risk of depression is higher in the group two, okay? So the outcome that you wanted to know is the prevalence of the depression. So when you group them into two, when you have comparison group, this becomes analytic. You are not just describing. So, but at the same time here, 
you get the result and the outcome at one point in time. Even for survey, you can determine the risk factor and the outcome without comparing, so that is descriptive. When you have two groups, you get the risk factors and the outcome, but you are comparing them. This is analytic because you are analyzing the difference, okay? So for example, you wanted to know the risk of lung cancer in those who are smoker. So if you have here two groups, okay? So when you have two groups, it becomes analytic, no longer descriptive. So you have here a group of smokers and non-smokers, and then you determine who has lung cancer at the same time of the study, then you are doing cross-sectional study. Risk factors and outcome at the same time is a cross-sectional study, okay? So comparing observational study, time is always the key, okay? The technique in answering your study design question is the time. For example, in cohort study, at the present, what you get is the exposure or the risk factor, and then you go forward to determine who will develop the disease. This is cohort. For case control, at the present, you get the disease plus the control, and then you go back in time to determine who has the exposure or no exposure, that is case control. For cross-sectional at present, you get disease and exposure at the same time, then that is cross-sectional, okay? So let us summarize. As I've mentioned, the confusion always comes here, case control and retrospective, okay? So these are all your study. This is the start of the study. Look very carefully, okay? Start of the study with the arrow. So for case control, you get the cases and the control and then you go back in time to get the risk factor, case control, cases control, okay? What is the difference between case control and retrospective cohort? At the time of the study, for retrospective cohort, you go back in time first, you get the risk factor, it's always the risk factor for a cohort study, you get the risk factor and then you go forward at present time, so this is the past, you go back in time, get the risk factor, go forward until present and determine who will develop the disease. This is a retrospective cohort. Prospective cohort is still the same. You, de you determine the risk factor at present time. You go forward to the future, 2024, 2023, 2022. You go forward to the future and determine who will develop the disease prospective cohort, okay? Similarly, a clinical trial, your RCT or your experimental study, you give treatment, no treatment, and then you go back, you go forward to the future. So what you will notice here is an RCT is a cohort study. The difference is here, these are risk factors. Here, these are treatment. So. RCTs are longitudinal study, are cohort study. So remember, longitudinal study, cohort is a longitudinal study, and RCT is a cohort study, okay? So don't be confused, okay? So because we talked about, you have any questions before I proceed with internal study? Is it clear? So far? Yes, it is clear. Any proceed. So clinical trials or interventional, as I've mentioned, when you say clinical trials, interventional study, this deals with treatment or intervention, okay? So this is what we call randomized, okay? Always remember the other name for randomized is experimental study. And the other name for non-randomized is quasi-experimental study, okay? Uh, I remember this previously came out in one of the RCOG exam and the student get confused between quasi-experimental because it was defining a non-randomized controlled trial. Remember, it is one and the same, okay? So in a randomized controlled trial, we have single-blinded and double-blinded. When you say single-blinded RCT, that means the patient doesn't know what intervention he is receiving, but the doctor knows it. Okay, in a double blinded, both the doctor and the patient doesn't know. Okay. 
So remember, uh, in terms of the strength of the result of the study, double-blinded is higher or stronger than single-blinded. And of course, RCT is stronger than quasi-experimental study. So the exact defini definition of your quasi-experimental study will be discussing that later on. So for, non -ran for randomized controlled trial, it is an experimental comparison study in which participants are allocated to the treatment or interve intervention and control using a random mechanism, okay? It is the best, remember, best study for an effect of an intervention, okay? So for example, in, a, in the question, you have here treatment and you have an option. You have both cohort in the option and then you have RCT. And the question is asking about treatment or, or intervention of course, you have to choose RCT, okay? If RCT is not there, then you have to choose cohort, okay? Randomized controlled trial is the disadvantage is it is expensive, okay? So quasi-experimental study, as I've mentioned to you, this is the same as your non-randomized controlled trial because it has no random assignment, okay? So what do you mean by crossover study? When you say crossover study or the crossover design, you have two, two groups of individual. This, are, this is an RCT, okay? You have study participants and you have randomization. You give the group A treatment A and group B treatment B, okay? After a certain period of time, they will enter into the washout period and then they will ex exchange the treatment. So those, the group A will take treatment B and the group B will take treatment A. Washout period is important because this washout period is the period wherein you are waiting for the effect of this treatment to go out of the system of the participants before you give the before you change or exchange the treatment. So this is your crossover study or your crossover design. Okay. So what are the significance of these studies? Okay, this is very, very important. Okay, you have to memorize this. In our course, we, te we teach you how to memorize or we give you a lot of mnemonics. For example, cohort, okay? When you want to determine the prognosis of a disease, you will use cohort study, okay? So the, the technique here is prognosis has two O's and your cohort has two O's, okay? So that you will not forget because during the pressure of the exam, the, the informations that are volatile, you always tend to forget. Okay, so prognosis, two O's, cohort, okay? If you want to know the cause and effect, you see here cause, when you remove the U, it spells as case, okay? So for cause and effect, case control, you have to use, okay? For, cross, for diagnosis, you see here osis, okay? U, have here OSS and your cross also have OSS, okay? So don't confuse OSS, OSS with prognosis and diagnosis. Diagnosis doesn't have two O, okay? So two O's cohort, OSS, OSS, cross-sectional, okay? If you want to know the incidence of the disease, you have here two eyes and longitudinal study, Okay, you have two eyes. So for incidence, you can use what? For incidence, you can use longitudinal. And because you know that longitudinal study, longitudinal, because you know that longitudinal study are also, cohort studies are also longitudinal. That means you can use cohort to determine the incidence of the disease. Okay, but First, it is longitudinal. If longitudinal is not in the option, you choose cohort, okay? And you can also determine the incidence of the disease using RCT because you give intervention and then you follow up treatment, determine if someone will develop the disease out of the treatment. So you can also use randomized control trial. Okay, so for treatment and intervention, remember treatment trial, okay? So it starts both with TR. Okay, for prevalence, you have to memorize. I mentioned a while ago for rare exposure, because what you gather exposure, you go with cohort. For rare diseases, what you gather are diseases, you go with case control. 
and for prevalence, cross-sectional, okay? These are very, very important. This slide is very, very important, okay? So now let's uh, test understanding, test knowledge. We, I have five SBAs and one EMQ. I need a volunteer, anyone? Mem data was collected from maternal record of women having shoulder dystocia at delivery and compared with normal deliveries along with birth weight of babies. What type of study? Okay, analyze first. analyze first. Okay, so you, you're telling me it is retrospective, okay? Retrospective. Why, did consider, why did you consider it is retrospective? Because you see here maternal records, right? Yes. So that means this has happened already. So you wanted to know the the um, it's past record, past it's records done. of those women. Okay. So what are the groups? Do you have groups? Yes, ma'am. Data was collected from maternal record of women having shoulder delivery and compared. Yes, ma'am. Two groups. Okay. So what groups? We have two. Case control. I think this is case control. No. One of the normal. Groups? And one and normal, other one. one with birth date of babies. One normal and then one is <laughs> with having so shoulder dystocia, right? Mm -hmm. So this yeah. group of women who had shoulder dystocia at delivery and compared with normal deliveries, of course, you know the risk factor birth weight of the babies, okay? So this, you have, since you have two groups and one group is normal, so this is what? These are your cases. And that one and is this your control. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. So this is case control. Yeah, this is case control. Okay, wait, huh? Okay. Who would like to answer the next question? I. Okay, go ahead. Data was collected from maternal record of women having shoulder dystocia at delivery along with birth weight of babies. What is the type of study? Current study, I'm on. So yes. analyze the question. You have again maternal record. So that means this is, has happened already. So this is the past. This is retrospective. Okay, sorry. Yes. Okay, and you have here? This one, shoulder dystocia, this is the outcome, risk right? Factor. Okay. With weight is the risk factor. So you are determining outcome and risk factor in a retrospective. You don't have control group. So what is this? Uh, cohort. Yes, what cohort? Re retrospective cohort. Very good. Okay. Yes. So that is the retrospective cohort. Okay. Yes. Next question, volunteer. Me. Should I? That, okay. okay. Can I do this? Okay, okay. go ahead. So go the, ahead. Data, data was collected from women having shoulder dystocia at delivery along with birth weight of the babies. What is the type of study? A, retrospective, prospective, cross-sectional case control, RCT. Now, the again, the respective was those shoulder dystocia at delivery. Um, I mean, the outcome was shoulder dystocia delivery along with the birth weight. Again, the data is collected. What are we doing with this data? What is the type of study? Okay. Um, These are your outcome. Mm -hmm. And this is your risk factor, right? You determine at the time of delivery, there's no maternal records. So that means this is happening at present time, at the okay. time. Of okay. What is this? The data was collected from women. The randomly okay. data is being collected. Observational kind of study like this. Data was collected from women. Very no, good. No. The gentleman. Yes. Cross sectional. How come it is cross sectional? Why? Because you are determining the outcome and the risk factor okay. at the same time. I mm -hmm. mentioned that to you. This is mm -hmm. not. This is not done in the past, so you can eliminate retrospective in case control. This is so not cross section has to be in the present, like what we are doing right now. Yes, at the time that you're doing the study, you gather the disease and the outcome. 
This is not RCT because this is not intervention. Okay, so you are not following them up in the future, so that is not prospective. So the answer is cross sectional. Okay, okay. Right. so you can see here three shoulder dystocia question. Okay, that came uh -huh. out in the previous exams mm -hmm. for so many, many times, so many, many years, but they twisted. Okay. So one is case control, one is retrospective cohort, and one is cross-sectional. So it determine it depends on your analysis of the situation. They can okay. give you they can give you shoulder dystocia question, five question on shoulder dystocia. But if you don't know how to analyze it, your answer will always be the same. Okay, yeah. so you have to analyze it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one. What's the problem? Okay, go ahead. A researcher wants to obtain evidence of association of exposure of pregnant women to passive smoking and outcome. The following research method is appropriate. So at the time of the study, what you are doing? You are collecting what? data. Risk factor also? Association of exposure of pregnant no, women. No exposed and non-exposed. Where is the non-exposed? There is not other group. Okay, so you are you are going uh, you are obtaining an evidence of association mm -hmm. of exposure of pregnant women to passive smoking. That yes, means those who are exposed, correct, and those who are not exposed. Yes. And you wanted to know the outcome. Case control. Why case control? What is the outcome of passive smoking? Can all the risk factors of passive smoking. What is the outcome of passive smoking? IUGR babies, um, low birth weight babies, okay. pre delivery. Okay. So do you do you determine this now? These are just pregnant women. Mm. Did you get the outcome at the time of the study or not yet? No, we don't get it. Not the time yet. Study. We're just so collecting data. This is not case, uh, this is not a uh, case cross-sectional. Okay. So this is not mm. case series. This is not RCT. So it's a mm. cohort it's study. What is it? Prospective it's a prospective cohort. cohort. It yes, will predict what will happen. Yes, yes. It it's a prospective cohort because you are mm. just gathering. Exposure and non-exposure in pregnant women, mm. and you are still to determine the outcome. Mm. Okay. okay. So you will follow these women to deliver, and then yeah. you will get the outcome. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank. So I get it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next. Yes. Okay. Next one. I think this is the last SBA, and then we'll go to so EMG. I Should I follow me? Okay, go ahead. The researcher is studying the side effects of a new anti-hypertensive medication in two groups of pregnant women. There are two groups, 100 women in each group with PIH pregnancy-induced hypertension. The first group receives the new medication. The other receives a conventional one. Okay. This type of epidemiological studies will suit this study. Case control study cohort study, cross-sectional study, double-blind mm. randomized control trial D, ma'am. D, why D? Because have they to justify. are of the intervention of treatment also, and you know. Very good, very good. I'm just testing your knowledge. Yes, you are correct. Sorry. Thank you, ma'am. So in the exam, don't, don't uh, doubt yourself, okay? Because mm. sometimes, most of you, when you go back to the question, you tend to change your answer. Don't doubt yourself. Usually okay. the first the first choice is always the correct answer and you end up changing your answers. So medication, always think of RCT first. If RCT is not there, what will you choose? If RCT is not there, then we have to do the cross-sectional or case control? No, then Why cross-sectional? You don't... Oh, Cohort, I told you. Cohort, okay. cohort, group study. Then huh? It will be retrospective. No, it will be not prospective. What will we will do? Just cohort? This is cohort prospective because you are giving treatment yes. now 
and then yeah, we are seeing the future we will like see the outcome that. what happens next yeah. yeah so this is prospective cohort okay this can if also be answered this is so tricky <laughs> okay let's go to emq okay the law uh, to is one by one okay okay don't talk at the same time who would like to volunteer should i get me okay go ahead what's your name humera sorry <laughs> humera go ahead longitudinal descriptive study mem uh, one by one to choose the answer you can answer all if you want okay, in the interest of time you answer all okay go ahead i will just yeah. guide you okay longitudinal descriptive study seems to be cohort case control study cohort cross sectional study rct randomized control trial survey for longitudinal descriptive study letter a we will go first don't don't look here get to where study outcome to, to study a rare outcome what is this mm. what Awesome. Rare outcome, yes. Case control. Case control study. Okay, to study a rare exposure. Rare exposure mean cohort. Cohort, very good. Measure the incidence. Incidence is mean a uh, uh, longitudinal. Longitudinal description study. Yes, okay. two I, two I. Double I. I. Double I. I. Okay. Measure the prevalence. Prevalence. Yeah. Okay. Long term. Prevalence is men. Ah. Uh, I mentioned this. Cross sectional. Very good. Okay. Where little is known about the magnitude of the disease. Survey. Uh, survey. 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 Okay. The, the the strongest evidence between exposure and outcome. RCT. RCT. Prognosis. Prognosis of disease. Cohort. 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 Maybe cohort. cohort. So that means you are all listening, huh? Diagnosis. To study the diagnosis. Case control study. Diagnosis. Osis. Osis. There is nothing else. Cross sectional. Okay. This is the only way I can make it out. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's yeah. the end of my webinar. Did you learn yeah. something? Yeah, it's amazing. We are, I'm, I'm, lots of concepts are clear now. Okay, so this is how I teach biostatistics in our workshop. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. stop until it's clear for, for all of you. And for those of you who mentioned that you hate biostatistics, I'm sure mm -hmm. after the workshop, you will love biostatistics. So I Hopefully. hope... Yes, I hope you will join me in my workshop and I hope you will join us in our progressive course. Okay, so if you have any other questions for statistics, I'm here for the progressive or the by statistics workshop and the revision workshop. Uh, Asma is there at the back end. So you can ask your question now before so that we can all go to, into iftar, okay? Okay. Yeah. So any question, guys? Thank you, ma'am. Ma Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for okay, spending man. time. The recording nice will be, yes, the recording will be uploaded in the YouTube channel of MedExam. Okay, thank you guys for joining me. Bye -bye. Thank you so much, ma'am. I love this. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. <laughs> She's my daughter. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I love this, ma'am. Thank you so much. Pleasure having a session with you, ma'am. I love this. Okay, bye-bye, guys. Have your breakfast now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.